Hey, how's it going? I'm Isla Golden and welcome to my vlog. Alright, okay, so I'm not completely sure what I want to talk about this time. Um, I already attempted to record this vlog uh, earlier in the week, um, but I ended up not really being overly happy with what I recorded, um, mostly because I just spent the entire time complaining about the fact that gas and electric is going up and stuff like that, and I'm kind of like, well, yeah, that is definitely an issue, that is definitely a problem, it's definitely something that I feel like I want to talk about, but I think some of the ways that I talked about it might have confused my meaning a little bit, um, so... <laughs> Okay, I guess this is attempt two at doing that. Um, so anybody who lives in the UK knows, probably knows this, um, but gas and electric bills are going up, um, in most cases doubling. I mean, mine has like one pound off being exactly double uh, what it previously was. I paid by monthly direct debit. Um, so it's actually, you know... <laughs> quite scary increase um, when you actually sort of stop to think about it. Um, I have been in a situation since moving into, so since becoming a homeowner, since moving in here, I have finally spent a few years in a situation where I'm not 100% comfortable, but I'm on the comfortable side of the line between struggling and comfortable. <laughs> So, like, barely in the comfortable bracket um, is where I've kind of been since moving in here and sort of recovering some of the money from that. Um, one of the things I mentioned in the in the vlog that um, I'm replacing this one with is that um, if I had to go on to benefits tomorrow, the amount of money currently to my name would be less than the maximum that you are allowed by a substantial amount um, in terms of savings um, when you go on to benefits. So yeah, it, it's a it's a case of yeah, I have had for the last couple of years enough money where I have not had to worry too much about it. Yes, I'm always the type who's going to save for things and then buy the things when I can afford them. Uh, rather than somebody who will like spend the money and then not have any money. <laughs> I, I don't like not having any money. I've been in that situation enough times to know that I don't like being in that situation. Um, the last couple of years have been like the first time where I've not really been worrying too much. I've not really felt like I've been struggling too much. I've felt like I'm not like... I don't have loads and loads and loads of spare cash around, but I'm not the type of person that spends lo like money like that anyway. I've, I've always been quite careful with my money. I'm just going to continue being quite careful with my money. But this increase in the gas and electric um, very much makes me feel like I'm, I'm so close to that border of, of struggling um, that, you know, if I'm, if I'm not careful, I may end up on the wrong side of that. So... Um, I've been strategizing uh, various things that I can do where, you know, that might cost me a little bit of money up front, but in the long time, long term, will help me sort of keep one step ahead of these increases in, in bills. And that's basically finding ways of making my household run more efficiently, um, like cutting out any unnecessary uses of um, my gas and electric um, so it's things like I'm looking in, so I've got old double glazing in my windows um, and obviously that's not very effective um, I've also got really high windows as well like the really tall kind of windows as well so obviously like a lot of uh, heat does lose through that I mean you, you can literally like stand in front of them and, and you can feel how much cold that area is and like a lot of draft does come through. Um, my radiators are all under my windows which is great for preventing damp, don't get me wrong, that's exactly where they, they need to be. But things like 
I'll just get some thick curtains to put in front of the windows isn't necessarily going to be the best solution because that's where the radiators are and that is then going to make the radiators work less efficiently which means then that you're going to like you're not really mitigating the, the issue so I've been looking into like other things that I can do um, in order to basically reduce the amount of heat lost through my windows and some of those are things that I can put into place now and some of those are things that I will look into once we're through the summer um, or once like in, in like in a few more weeks like maybe once we, we head into the summer because some of those methods might be okay for like reducing how hot the flat gets during the summer as well um, and making it more comfortable in here during the summer as well because it like the, the same method of it like trapping heat will also like reflect heat um sort of like coming in so like it, it's one of those things where i'm like i'm not sure if it'd be better to do stuff now or if it would be better to do stuff like after the summer it's it'll it, it'll depend on what methods that i eventually go for but um as i said there is one that i'm definitely going to do now which will uh which will be like because the, the other thing with the the other method that i've looked at it does look like it's one of those things that you need to maybe need to redo every year and I'm kind of like oh I'd rather not have to keep spending out every year on on this and it's it's one of those where it's kind of like well, would I want to do it for so I know I don't need to worry about the bedroom window uh, because the bedroom window is situated at the back of the house where it's more sheltered um, and actually I don't lose a lot of heat from that room I also don't spend a lot of time in that room so it the way it is at the moment is perfectly fine I'm not going to worry too much about it I don't feel like I need to worry too much about it what I worry about is um the living room in particular um because again like uh, keeping the kitchen door closed will probably help with a lot of that but at the same time it's a sliding door so you do lose a little bit of heat for it it's not necessarily the most heat proof um so it's one of those where i'm like i i know the, the method that i i'm going to put into place as soon as i can be bothered to actually put it into place because I've, I've got the stuff right now that arrived yesterday um i know i'm going to do both of these windows because both of these windows they're exposed windows um so that a lot of the draft from this flat comes in through those windows like as i said the back one is not so bad because it's in a sheltered location but these ones are like they're very exposed windows there's like there are no buildings around there are no trees around there's there's nothing around to sort of naturally mitigate um a lot of the heat that you lose through these windows and a lot of the draft that comes in through these windows so that these are my focus ones and i'm like i'm definitely going to do the method that i've already got now on both of these windows because that is going to help both of these windows out but then it's a case of well do I want to do these other methods um, on both of these windows or do I just want to do it on the living room window because actually having the kitchen door closed is gonna like mitigate most of that problem anyway and um, hopefully by losing less from this this window then it will make the entire flat more efficient um, in terms of heat because this is the largest space in the flat and if this is staying warm it's going to help keep all the other areas warm then at the same time it's like well the boiler is in the kitchen and the um, temperature sensor thingy is in here but like between the two of them that's how it judges what the temperature of the flat is so if the kitchen is getting too cold it's going to counterbalance that and then like the, the radiators are not necessarily going to work in the most efficient way um, so it's a case of okay do I want to sort of like do both of those windows then and make sure that they're both done but like I said the main method that I'm looking at for that looks like something that you need to redo every single year and it's also not necessarily going to be the cheapest way of going about it so yeah it's it's one of those things where i'm just i can't afford to, to replace the double glazing um mostly because i'm a first floor first floor flat um so it's going to incur extra costs just on that alone um so i'm like i yeah i, I know at this point like 
I need to look for the cheaper alternatives that are going to be effective. Um, and ones I don't need to keep replacing. As I said, the method that I got now, I know once it goes down, that's it, that's fine. It should remain in place. Um, there should be no reason for it to to go anywhere. I know I don't get a lot of comments. I, I know I don't get any conversational damp on these windows. So anything that I do um, do use for them should be fairly effective. But the idea that I might need to end it, like replace it every year is, is what worries me. But I don't know if that's you replace it every year because you have to open the windows in the, the summer and like the method like the method is to just like cover the whole area. I'm like, I, I don't know, I need to do a little bit more research into actually how how that works and if there is a way for me to do it without it needing to be removed afterwards. Or even if it's like I don't need to remove it from like the bottom ones, but I need to remove it from the top ones so I can and do it in the summer like replacing because I'm, I'm basically talking about four large windows when I'm talking about my front windows um they're basically like um it, it's a whole like big window thing so there's two actual windows but made up of like four sections um and like the top section on each of them is the bit that opens um that's the bit that you know i'm kind of like well is there a way of doing that bit where i can i can do it so that i'm not losing the heat through the glass but it's not necessarily the most effective way but then you don't have to replace it i don't know as i said i need to do more research and i need to understand why they need replacing each year if it's just they need replacing each year because you have to open the windows and all you need to like people want to open the windows in the summer and that's the reason for doing it then i'll be like okay bottom half of the windows can just have it on permanently all the time but i may need to replace the top half like every so often and even then it would only really be the one in here because i don't tend to open the the top window in the kitchen because again i don't spend a lot of time in there i only really need the one in here to be opened um especially since i started like shutting the door because I, that helps balance the temperature for that a lot more um but yeah it's a lot of things that i'm like thinking of and as I said the the main thing like the main thing that I need to get on top of is the heating because I know once I reach the winter just based on how cold this flat does get because high ceilings um if I do not have this flat running more efficiently I could run into a lot of problems in the winter like the summer is going to be fine I can probably build up a lot of credit during the summer and if they do like like shooting pack um, credit to me then I've got money there in reserve so that when things do go up in the winter I can sort of like just chuck the extra bit on so that I'm not getting too far behind but my biggest concern is the winter the winter is going to the, the winter is going to be expensive the winter has been expensive every single year that I've been here um, because it, as I said this flat does get very cold um, so it's it's a case of okay, I need to make this flat more efficient um, so that it's not losing quite so much heat, so it stays a bit warmer, so that I'm not having to use so much energy to keep it warm. Um, and then hopefully that should mitigate the, the necessity for having the heating on in the winter. Um, so, I mean, as I said, I, I know the winter is going to be more expensive regardless, it 100% it will. I barely use um, any gas during the summer because all it's doing is, is heating my water, which washing up in shower um, and baths. Um, so all, you know, it's so much cheaper during the summer months, um, during, the, the, during the warmer months. And like, if I delay putting the heating on, um, in like if i delay putting the heating on and then like um this year I, I turned the heating off or stopped putting the heating on a little bit earlier than i might have otherwise just to sort of start to pre-balance things out a little bit more i mean it's definitely still as i said the high ceilings in this flat means this flat gets very chilly the, t the tall windows in this flat means this flat gets very chilly um the fact that it is all double glazing and those windows are very drafty means this flat gets very chilly so um turning the heating off a little bit sooner than i might have otherwise was not uh necessarily what i would have wanted to have been doing this year i'd like to have been a little bit more comfortable um but as it is 
like those are two definite strategies that I had in place um but I know come the actual winter this flat is going to be very 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 cold um so I need to have a plan in place and I need to have things in place that is going to help maintain the heat of this flat um effectively and as I said I've been looking into a lot of methods and all of these methods are things that have been like recommended um as I said one of them I know I can get down and it's going to be a permanent thing I just need to figure out if the other thing is permanent as long as you don't open the windows um in which case it's not actually going to be that bad in terms of yearly expense um I may need to sort of like occasionally like redo one or one or the other of them um depending on circumstances but like anything like I, I don't mind things sort of having like that one-off expense to them or like occasional sort of like oh yeah but you can just like replace it cheaper um it, it's a case of you know I, if i do it i want to know that i'm doing it effectively especially because i will be having to buy multiple of these sheets because <laughs> um big windows and and the big windows are like the size like almost the size of some of these um this like the standard sheets and like you only get one sheet in the book and it's kind of like that's just ridiculous so as i said i want to make sure that i'm doing it as efficiently and effectively as possible um even if it's a case of like i get like the, the good quality ones for like the where they're, they're not going to be open and and they just stay there and like cheaper ones for um the, the the bits that you know may need to be replaced as I said, I need to figure out why they need to be replaced so that I can work out the most effective strategy going forward. And it may well be that I actually find some some alternative. Um, there may well be like a lot of like different other things that you can do, which like permanent things that, you know, they just go on the glass and, and it's fine. And they're easier to set up and stuff like that, because that's, that's the other thing. Is they, they don't make particularly easy to set up. So I'm like, I'm not. I'm not really looking forward to having to do it um but at the same time it's like I, I need to find a way of making these windows more effective more efficient and I, I've known that since moving in um I've just not really had the motivation to do it because you know at the end of the day at, at the end of the day to, to be honest like I've been comfortable enough to afford it um but I'm going in you know, about to go into a period where I'm not going to be comfortable enough to afford it so I, I need to sort of get things in place now that will allow me to continue to live comfortably in the future um that's that's my aim like my my aim is not you know to be super rich necessarily though you know sometimes that I think that might be nice I'd much rather just be living comfortably within my means which is what I've been doing for the last couple of years. I'm no, you know, I don't, I'm not an extravagant spender. I don't, you know, splash out on lots of stuff and, and, and things like that. I don't need lots of money. That's why I don't have debt. Um, but in order to like maintain a comfortable, like my version of a comfortable lifestyle and not to feel like I'm struggling, um, I need to figure out how to make certain things more effective and more efficient in certain things that I can be doing and stuff like that so yay yay adulting um all right okay so hopefully this has been a sort of interesting one um I hope you're looking forward to whatever it is I'm going to be talking about next time and I will see you next time see ya if you've enjoyed this video, consider checking out some of my others, and if you like what you see, consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching, see ya!